So I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I was born in 1991. I was about 18 months old. My older sister <clears throat> passed away. She fell through a glass table holding me. So at a very young age, like I, uh, I felt that that separated me from everybody around me. I had a hard time uh, making friends and I just was really like the oddball. I grew up in the same neighborhood my parents grew up in and I can definitely say it wasn't the neighborhood my parents grew up in anymore. I mean, we grew up skating and throwing rocks through windows and just fucking causing hell. We thought like we wanted to be Baker Deathwish. Like that was that what we looked up and looking back at it, it's really childish. It was just like street life shit. Like we just thought we were fuck the fucking coolest and baddest little kids this west of the Mississippi, you know what I mean? And like, like in, in hand in hand with that thought process goes like drinking and smoking weed. Like, and that's how it started. If I had to like really sum up my drug use, like it, it happened like a guidance counselor from the D.A.R.E. program would tell you it happened. Like. I was not really ever into smoking weed or drinking, but like I wanted to fit in. And my friends, like, you know what I mean? All the people from my neighborhood were like drinking and smoking weed. And I, I didn't have the ability to be like, that's not me, you know what I mean? So I started drinking and smoking weed and breaking windows and punching people and robbing shit. You know what I mean? Just, just the insanity that goes in along with trying to fit in, like it's insane. When I turned 18, like my life fell apart. Like my buddy of mine, I, uh, my best friend, we were camping up in the, uh, Mount Lemon, anybody who's familiar with Tucson, it's like a big camp spot. So we're shooting guns and like a tragedy ends up happening and uh, my buddy gets shot right next to me. And he doesn't, he didn't, he didn't make it. So yeah, that fucked with me pretty heavily. And looking back, like more than anything, I was like, I have the right to do drugs now. Like I have the fucking right. Like I just watched my best friend die. Like I have the right. I have no, like nobody can tell me shit. Like I, I have the, the golden ticket. Like, you know what I mean? That's looking back. At the time, I was just needed something to take away the pain of re reliving that every day. It goes from Friday to Friday, Saturday to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like getting high on those days until, and then pretty soon it's like Tuesday through Monday. Like, you know what I mean? And then, then you can't wake up without it. And like, one thing I've, I've realized is like, I wake up at like zero, maybe negative two, like pretty often, you know what I mean? And what dope did for me was like, it was right there. It was just like, through my time of getting high, like it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Before I got locked up, like I was in a pretty bad way. Like I was homeless. I was like stealing to get dope. Like I was doing bad already. So like it had already been bad for me. It wasn't like this like grandeur. It was already pretty bad. And I was, I've always been the person who's like, you know, we really got to stop doing this. Like, as I'm getting high, like, you know, we should really change our lives. You know, we got to stop doing this, man. Like, and just, but I couldn't, I didn't know how. The, the, the party was over long ago. Like the, the grandeur of like, I'm going to do this and we're going to, oh, it's just, turn up. Like, no, like all that was gone. For me, it was just misery. This is one of the first times, like looking back, this is one of the first times for me, like I knew I wanted to be sober. I just didn't know how. You know what I mean? I knew I wanted it, I just didn't know how to do it. Like, and so left to my own devices, I went back to what I always knew, was getting high and fucking shit up. Like, and that's very easy. It's been uh, truly, truly life-changing. Like, the staff here is, uh, it's, it's very obvious and apparent from the time I got here that they care, that they genuinely care and also they live by what they're preaching. It's not like, yeah, stay sober, do the right thing, and then they go drink on the weekends. Like, you know what I mean? They are, they are in it just as much as we are, and they make you feel a part of. And from the very beginning, I felt a part of this, this community, and uh, it's like something to take pride in. The connection is huge, man. It's like, it's like, for me, like when I'm struggling or when I'm having a hard time, these people know me as opposed to knowing this facade I put up for the, the world of getting high and using. Um, so they know when I'm like, I, it's very hard to fake it to people who know you. So when they, you're struggling, they want to know and they care and they come reach out to you and you can't just give them the I'm fine. If you use or not, being able to set a goal for yourself and understand that not 
uh, succeeding is not failing. Nobody cares if you, if you do or don't finish the workout or if you do or don't like cut reps or like, oh, I'm supposed to do 10, but I'm gonna do eight. You know what I mean? Like you, the only person you're hurting is yourself. Like, and I, that's something I took out very early on is like, this is a chance to like get honest with myself and push myself to a, a better boundary. Working out before going to uh, like a group or, or anything, what have you, any like social engagement. Like I feel more attentive, I feel more alert. I honestly feel like I care more and I'm worried more and I'm just present as opposed to where like if I roll out of bed and I roll in the group and I'm just like, Ugh. like it's just, it's very simple stuff here. Like it's, we're not talking, like, you know what I mean? I feel like people are like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. It's like, yeah, it's very, very obvious. Like if you get up and you get going for the day, but it's like, yeah, and it gives me the ability to like, I feel more authentic and genuine when I, when I go to the gym first and then I come into group, I feel like I can genuinely um, listen and not just listen to like have a rebuttal, but like genuinely listen to somebody. When the fear of staying the same outweighs the fear of change, growth will happen.